EQ, EQ, EQ. I can't get away from this one no matter what I do. Like, listen to my voice right now and listen to it now. I can't even make a video with it because the audio needs to be EQ'd properly. I can't escape it and maybe that's cause I make videos about mixing and EQ is basically the building block for everything. Well, nevertheless, in the overview of this series, I talked about what the biggest mixing mistakes were. And the thing that came to mind was people that over EQ the source. That's cool. I can just say that and move on to the next topic, but I'm also a glutton for punishment. So I want to talk about how to avoid these poor EQ mistakes. By the end of this video, you're going to have a better grasp as to what is a mistake with EQ and how to avoid it. But the only thing to make you better at EQing is practice and hard work. So let's get into that right now. The first way to avoid EQ mistakes, use EQ that's subtractive. And since we're on the subject of subs, don't be a subpar watcher while I subliminally get into your subconscious with the word subscribe. Hit that red button, that bell on your EQ to be notified and like button if you're loving the content. Transition game, kinda out of control today. Instead of always boosting frequencies, try cutting unnecessary or problematic frequencies using subtractive EQ. I learned this a long time ago and it really helped me out when I was first starting out, you know. A.L. Levy from DAF and Unstoppable Recording Machine used to help me with my mixing flaws and me good practices to keep and this was one of them. This approach helps to clean up the mix, reduce muddiness and create space for other instruments to shine without unnecessarily boosting frequencies and potentially causing an unnatural tonal balance. Just remember that every time you're boosting something, you're adding something that doesn't exist. And that's fine, but it's a weird thought when you think about it. Let's deal with the issues that do exist and not try to solve problems with things that don't. Let's check out something that would benefit way more from cuts than from boosting. Uh, I feel better about that knowing that I'm also making space for other elements to shine through in the mix because I cut first. But let's get into the second thing that helps you avoid over EQing, making surgical EQ adjustments. Avoid broad EQ adjustments that affect a wide range of frequencies until you really know what you're doing. Instead, make surgical EQ adjustments by pinpointing those problems, the frequencies, and addressing them with narrow or precise EQ cuts and boosts. And this is gonna help you address specific issues without affecting the overall tonal balance of the mix. We're gonna sweep around for some resonances here and see if we can get rid of them with some tropical, <laughs> with some tropical, with some proper surgical EQ adjustments. That is my bread and butter right there. Don't get me wrong, broadband EQ sounds more musical, but as you saw, it's pretty easy to point out resonances when swapping, so it's a great place to start with if you don't wanna mess up your source audio. Like I said, my bread and butter with guitars and vocals for sure. JST EQ makes this super easy to do, and that's what I've been using throughout this video, and you can grab your free trial by going to the link in the description below. Just make sure you don't cut too much when going surgical because things can start to sound really odd. And now we're getting into our next point, referencing against a well mixed track. This is simple enough, right? Use a well-mixed reference track as a comparison to guide your EQ decisions. A, B, comparing your mix with a pro mix track can help you identify problems that you're having with your EQ and make more informed EQ decisions to achieve a similar tonal balance to that one. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can always try to EQ match to see how much your EQ curve differs from a song you really like. Just make sure you reference things in a similar style and genre. It's a great way to tell if you have too much low end or low mid buildup that A, B can be crucial and making sure you don't go too far in one direction or another. But let's get on to our fourth point, shall we? Consider the context of the mix. Always do this when you're considering your next notch. Consider how each instrument or track fits within the overall mix and how their frequencies may interact with each other. For example, if you have multiple instruments occupying the same frequency range, right? You may need to EQ them differently to make sure they coexist in the mix without clashing into each other. You might like to scoop out low mids and guitars, but maybe this particular song needs a little more of that and you could benefit from using a dynamic compressor.
there's never gonna be a one size fits all for these things, so you have to be cognizant of what's going on. It's just like real life. You need to be aware of your surroundings. Pay attention to your material and with enough practice, it's eventually gonna guide you to do what you're supposed to. And this is our last topic and it might be the most important of them all. Use your ears, not just your eyes. And I know that's hard to do, especially with the way that EQs look nowadays, they're just so beautiful. While visual EQ displays can be helpful, you gotta trust your ears more than your eyes. You have to listen critically to the audio and make EQ adjustments based on how it sounds, rather than relying solely on random spikes, peaks, and valleys. Every mix is different, and what works visually may not always sound the best to the human ear. Take a look at something that sounds good, but might not be visually pleasing. And that's proof that just because something doesn't look cute, it doesn't mean that the mix doesn't slap. Just trust your ears. It's the ears, not the gear. But you're eventually gonna learn that it's the years, not the gear. After you're in the game for a few years, you start to become a little bit more free with those EQ moves. And as you experiment, you're gonna start to develop your own sound. Remember, EQ is an extremely powerful tool for shaping the tonal balance of a mix, but it requires careful and critical listening and decision making, and taking a surgical and context aware approach, using your ears as the primary guide, well that's gonna help you avoid those common mistakes and get a well-balanced mix. We're gonna go over all of these things one more time. Subtractive EQ, surgical adjustments, use reference tracks, context, and use your ears, not your eyes. Going over this, I hope you got an understanding of how to avoid over EQing because you have to get past this part to start focusing on the fun things to do with EQ. You have to be able to walk before you can start running, right? Well, I want nothing more than for this to be part of your journey for getting on the right path. Do you have any other questions? Have you ever mixed a song only with your eyes? If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notification so when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, my friends, I'll catch you later.